okay so welcome back uh, to another lecture uh, in e2080 microprocessor systems design and interfacing course so uh, too much of uh, blocks and theories boring a bit right so let's actually do some um, some interesting problem this is a real uh, design okay memory design real design uh, case which you may be experiencing uh, if you are going to work in this field at some point of time and some learning is also actually uh, there through this particular exercise so what i suggest actually is um, uh, before going to the solution that i'm going to provide you try out yourself okay so uh, this is more of a, for self learning so you need to pause the video appropriately and then try out yourself and see whether your answers match with my answers okay so this is a question so a hypothetical central processing unit so this can be anything has a parallel address so we didn't use the term central processing unit so far by the way right so we could actually even call a microprocessor itself as a central processing unit and uh, there is uh, uh, no ambiguity there because it is definitely the central processing unit of the system so it's another way to uh, call a microcomputer okay so that's it okay so it has a parallel address bus parallel data bus okay so there is an address bus there is a data bus so parallel means uh, we can treat them separate because they are live all the time it's not serial okay then there is a read and a write active low signal okay so do not there is a read and a write active low signal so active low okay so it's a negative logic or inverted logic uh, and of course uh, then there are two roms of size 4k words okay and each so what is this word we'll come to that and two rams of sizes 16k and 8k words respectively are to be connected to the cpu such a way that they fill the address space they fill the entire address space as per the memory map shown below so there is a memory map uh, shown to us so we'll come back come to that but before that uh, too many uh, technical jargons here right so let's take what is this uh, 4k means okay so what is the meaning of 4k so i hope i think i explained to you in one of the uh, previous lectures also so 1k in uh, digital terms it means uh, 2 raised to 10 or you can say 1 to 4 okay so this is a valid value so typically in uh, pure max we call 1k as 1000 right but in terms of digital logic it is 1024 and that can also be represented by 2 raised to 10 okay because 2 raised to 10 is 1024 so 4k means it is 4 into 2 raised to 10 or you can say 2 raised to 2 into 2 raised to 10 or you can say 2 raised to 12 or you can even say 4096 so that's a number and similarly you can expand 16k 8k and so on okay so that's the meaning now uh, another important aspect so but there is some ambiguity around this aspect because there are different definitions to it uh, in uh, different uh, textbooks and different uh, uh, companies but we will stick to what arm follows okay because we are going to talk about arm cortex m0 plus microprocessor so there are certain uh, terminology some jargons that people use okay so first one is actually nibble okay so n i b b l e so let's call one nibble this is equal to four bits okay so whenever you heard the term nibble and if you say one nibble it is four bits so two nibbles is eight bits and then of course this is uh, quite popular so one byte you know what it is it is 8 bits correct and uh, then uh, another one actually uh, in arm they follow is one half word okay so this is equal to 16 bits and then one word of course uh, now you know what if one half word is 16 bits one word is 32 bits and then one double word is equal to 64 bits so please remember this terminology this is specific to the arm processors and in some cases word is treated as 16 bits and so on but let's stick to arm processors so this is the terminology the jargon that you should always have in your mind so one nibble is 4 bits one byte is 8 bits one half word is 16 bits one word is 32 bits and one double word is 64 bits there's nothing beyond that so hardly you see any 128 bits machine because it's so complex that right? uh, 64 itself is so complex to manage and uh, you can't even think of managing 128 bits that doesn't mean that something like that doesn't come in future it may come okay so but so far it's all 64 bits that we are restricted to 
and in fact the cortex m0 plus that we are going to work on which again we will discuss in detail later but i thought i will just convey that message across it's a 32 bit system okay so 32 bit microprocessor okay so let me raise this so i hope uh, word so basically 4k word so that is very important so what it means actually is so it's very important to understand this okay so 4k word is your one of the rom so one of the rom is having size 4k word so what is exactly it means so 4k we already know it is 4096 and one word we already know it is 32 bit so the meaning of this is this so the rom this particular rom that we are talking about here or in fact both of them there are two 4k roms right so both of them they have 4096 locations please please remember that i think this uh, had created a lot of confusion in your seniors as well so please please remember this it means that 4096 memory locations are available and each location has 32 bit uh, data storage or address storage possibility so if you go back to our 8-bit microcomputer to make it more analogous, to make it more understandable, we had a 16 cross 8 RAM, right? It had 16 locations and each location had 8-bit. But now we are talking about 4096 locations and each location 32 bits long. Okay, so to represent it again, just want to make sure because some people like to see the picture best than the word explanation. So the representation is like you have something like 1, 2, etc. 4096 locations. And then the size, the width of each of these locations is 32 bits. That's the meaning of it. Okay, I hope it's clear. So similarly, if you go and uh, uh, see what is 8K, it means 8 into 1024 locations. And then each location is again 32 bit long. 16K is nothing but 16 into 1024 locations because 1k is 1024 that's what the meaning is and those many locations of each one each each location has a size of one word length that means 32 bits long okay so that's pretty clear i hope the question is now very clear so there are two roms of size 4k and two rams of size 16k and 8k and they are arranged in a particular order so physically they may be located at different regions but the address space is something like this this order so you have first 4k rom then 16k ram then 4k rom and then 8k ram and then the address is marked here uh, as 0 x x plus 1 y y plus 1 z z plus 1 w so the meaning actually is 0 to x are the address locations for 4k rom x plus 1 to y is the address location of 16k ram y plus 1 to z is for 4k rom and Z plus 1 to W is for 8K RAM. So for a microprocessor, it appears that it has a memory space, uh, memory address starting from 0 all the way up to W. Okay, so that is the meaning of it. So microprocessor doesn't see that they are physically separated. The 4K RAM may be somewhere else. 16K RAM may be somewhere else. They may not be co-located when we make the circuit or make the system. But we make the address space virtual, right? It is an address space which is virtual such a way that it continuously ranges from 0 all the way to W. Now let's come to the question. I am not uh, asked any questions here. So this is your first question. So what is the number of lines? That means number of wires at best width in the address bus of your CPU. This particular CPU. So what is the number of lines? This means the total number of bits to represent this entire memory. Not 1 or 2 or 3. Entire memory space. That means you have locations. How many locations you have? W locations you have, right? 0 to W. So this, how many bits are needed to represent these W locations? Or in fact, W is that upper number. So how many bits, how many wires, how many lines are needed to represent W locations? That is the question, meaning of this. Second question, determine the values of X, Y, Z and W. So we put some numbers here, X, Y, W in decimal. So decimal as well as uh, hexadecimal we can represent. So let's start with decimal. So X, what is this X corresponding to? What is this Y corresponding to? What is this Z corresponding to? What is this W corresponding to? Okay, so find it out. And then the last one is not the easiest. And last one you may not be able to solve also, which you need a lot of assistance from my side. So using a 2 is to 4 decoder, so some prior information is given to you because there is a lot of way to design this. 
so some constraint you are adding on so that it's crystal clear the direction is crystal clear to you so we do have a 2 is to 4 decoder okay. and you can take some additional logic gates some and or no, nand or nor or so on. your basic gates you can take so that is only resource that is available to you as a company let's say you are working in a company and this is the challenge given to you let's treat that way so that it becomes more interesting so but i only have 2 is to 4 decoder and a single of them and some additional logic gates you have. Now you come up with a circuit which can actually decode the uh, logic for you. Okay. So from the step number A, question number A. Okay. So from this question, you will come to know how many lines are required, how many address bits are required. So based on that, you need to come up with a decoding logic. Using those address lines, you need to add, you need to have a uh, select for this ROM or basically uh, the the microprocessor will issue uh, an address and now we need to fetch from any of these the data or uh, uh, the content which is actually lying in that address so that is the objective so the microprocessor is going to always uh, issue address corresponding to this uh, w locations it doesn't distinguish between rom or ram or rom or ram we need to come up with that decoding logic so that is the question number 4 so there will be an input which is given by microprocessor and based on that input, you should Id correctly identify the uh, memory, first of all, which of these memories are uh, to be selected. And then, of course, that address also should be given and then the data should be fetched out accordingly. So that is the idea. Okay, so don't worry, we'll understand as we go along. So let's, I mean, first two questions quite straightforward. You should be able to pause the video now and answer that question. Okay, should be very, very straightforward. So please pause the video before I come to the answer. So I'm going to tell you the answer now. Okay, so hope you got the answer. If not, I will explain to you what is the meaning of it. So you do have 4K, 16K, 4K, 8K, right? So let's actually see what is the total memory size. So the total memory size is basically this, right? You do have 4K plus 16K plus 4K plus 8K, which will come to 32K. And you know K is nothing but 2 raised to 10 or 1024 and 32 is nothing but 2 raised to 5. So this is 2 raised to 5 into 2 raised to 10, which is 2 raised to 15. So that means you have 15 bits are required to uh, represent this entire memory space. So that means your address line is 15 bits and let's uh, denote it by letter A. So it will be A0 to A14, A0 being the least significant bit and A14 being the most significant bit or 15th bit. So again, going back to our uh, case, it was 16 cross 8 and then 16 locations were there and it was nothing but 2 raised to 4 and hence we had a 4 bit address which was coming from your program counter if you remember that. So the first answer is quite straightforward. If you didn't get that answer, I'm sorry, you should need to work on. You need to understand the concepts more clearly. Keep repeating the videos and, and uh, try to understand it thoroughly. Okay, it's a straightforward question. So to answer the first question, the question number A, we need 15 lines or we need 15 bits and those bits can be represented by A14 to A0. So what is the meaning of it is your microprocessor, the guy who is sitting over here, it will issue a 15 bit address. So that address is A14, A13, so on, A0. So this address will go to a decoding logic and then that guy should select this uh, location so this is 4k rom this is uh, 16k rom ram sorry this is 4k rom again and then this is 8k ram so this will have a select signal some cs select signal for each select chip basically so this will be given from here and then of course there is an address which is like also going okay or maybe I'll come to that uh, more uh, better diagram. We will we'll have it in the next slide. Okay, so that's the meaning of it. And now second question, question number B. Determine the values of address X, Y, Z and W as decimal numbers. It's quite straightforward. It's actually not difficult. Okay, so we just need to, so what is X? X is actually easy to determine, right? Because you have uh, uh, 0 to 4K. So 4K, as we already discussed, it is uh, 4 into 1024 which is actually 4096 or in uh, binary terms it is 2 raised to how much 
2 raised to 2 into 2 raised to 10 this is 12 right so it is 12 bits uh, representing this 4096 locations so your x will be 4096 so what is y so y is basically uh, going up to 16k plus 4k right so y is basically 16k plus 4k which is actually 20k which is actually 20 into 1024 you please do the calculation and uh, let me know okay so what is the value here okay so but only thing is x is it 4096 i think there is a small error which i purposefully introduced so x is not 4096 because you are starting from zero please note here you are the first address location is zero right so x cannot be 4096 because you only have 4096 locations so if the first address is uh, 40 uh, sorry first address is zero then x is of course 4096 minus 1 which is 4095 Similarly, y is 20k minus 1, which is 20 into 1024 minus 1. In a moment, I will let you know the exact value, but you can calculate it. Okay. And similarly, you can very easy right now, z is very easy, 20, uh, 16k plus 4k plus 4k, which is 24k minus 1 because we started with 0. So, this is 24 into 1024 minus 1. And similarly, W is 8K plus 4K plus 16K plus 4K, which we already know it is 32K minus 1. So that is equal to 32 into 1024 minus 1. So that's it. And the answers are 4095, and now at the same stage, this is decimal representation. Now, can we represent this in hexadecimal? Because you know that the address has to be in bits, right? It cannot be in decimal number. Computer doesn't understand decimal number. It only understands bits. <clears throat> and representing the 12 bits all the time is also painful for us. So let's actually approximate it in hexadecimal. So what is this value? 4095. Okay, so the first value, the first address of course is 000. So we have 15 bits, right? So uh, that means you ideally can represent using this way of course this doesn't have the first bit because uh, not 16 bits it's 15 bits so you have 4 plus 4 plus 4 12 plus 3 bits only here so this is please remember this this is 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 so this is first least significant uh, byte then another then another and this is 3 so 4 plus 4 plus 4 12 plus 3 15 please remember this so the first location is 0, 0, 0. What is x corresponding to? 4095. Please do your calculation. So you will come to know that it is f, 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 if I remember correctly. Okay. Because uh, you do how, how to how to validate it. It's, um, I mean, quite easy. I hope you are familiar with the conversion of decimal to binary and all those things, right? So uh, this is basically going up to this. And then, of course, uh, we can actually uh, find it out um, uh, by substituting those numbers. Okay, so I think I have it in next slide. So let's not do it here. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> okay, so uh, it didn't work. That is the, uh, yeah, that's the uh, numbers. So you know these values. Now convert these values to the hexadecimal numbers. You almost get these values. Okay, so it's quite straightforward. If you take convert this to by decimal, you get those numbers. So we'll start from 0, 0, 0, 0. I use 0, x to, uh, uh, so, um, I mean, sort of specify that this is hexadecimal representation. So each one is 4 bits long. So 0, 0, 0, 0 will represent this first 0 and so on. So this one will be f means 1111, okay? So binary terms, it is 1111. So maybe for sake of understanding, let me represent this guy here. So the, this guy will be 0000, then 1111, 1111, 1111. So this corresponds to f, this corresponds to f, this corresponds to f, and this corresponds to 0. And that is the reason why you have that number here. Okay? Let me clear it off. And now, similarly, this, this guy, this plus 1 will be this guy. And then this is ranging from 0, 0, 0x, 1, 0, 0 to 4FFF. 
so it is actually interesting because one 4k is actually sort of one fff so how many 4ks are there here you have four 4ks right because 4 into 4 is 16 so four 4ks and that is why you have four fff here it's quite easy and then plus one will become 5000 and then of course uh, this 4k another fff so 5 to 5 fff is here and 8k is basically 6000 to 7 fff because 8k is two times FFF, right? So we basically you have from 5 plus 2 is 7. That is why you have 7 FFF. So this, please uh, don't uh, uh, have any confusion here. These are just uh, hexadecimal representation corresponding to the decimal values that we observed. Now we will move on to the uh, question number C. Okay. So the idea is uh, just like maybe I'll draw it in a much cleaner way. So you have a decoding logic. Okay. Some decoding logic. And we already know. Uh, what are the constraints you only can use two is to four decoder with some additional uh, logic gates that's only a thing that you can take and we know that the input to this is coming from microprocessor and this will have 15 bits as we derive now so it will have a14 a13 so on up to a0 so this is the input which is coming in and then we have one 4k rom here which is sitting nicely here Another, uh, of course, I'm not going by dimension. Or let me just draw it slightly. This is RAM. Then there is an 8, sorry, 4K ROM again. And then this 8K RAM. And then everything will have a, a, a chip select. So this will be a chip, a 4K ROM chip, a 16K ROM, RAM chip, a 4K ROM chip again, and 8K RAM chip again. So let them, all of them have a chip select signal and let this be negative logic. So each one of them will have a chip select and I'm creating a negative logic for uh, easier understanding. So CS bar, let's put that. Way. Okay. And then of course, each of these connections has to be coming from this decoding logic. And then of course, we need to have the address also. So how many address lines are required here? Please do that calculation. Those who didn't do the step A, question number A, you should do it now. So what is the number of address lines need to represent this 4K ROM? Please pause and answer me. I just need the address lines here. Yes. So I'm going to tell you the answer. 4K is nothing but again 2 raised to 2 into 2 raised to 10 is 2 raised to 12. So you need 12 bits. So basically you will have lines going from A11 to A0 here because A11 is the 12th bit, right? A0 is the first bit. So A11 will be the 12th bit. Similarly, how many address lines should go here? 16K. So 16K is nothing but 2 raised to 4 into 2 raised to 10 is 2 raised to 14, right? So you need 14 bits. Very interesting. So you need to have A13 to A0 here. Okay, out of this A14, A13 to A0, A13 to A0 should go here. A11 to A0 should go here. As the, this is the address, okay. For this RAM or ROM, there is an address. So this is the address lines that you are connecting. This is the address line. Chip select, we have to find out. Okay. And then A13 to A0 is there. Similarly, uh, what about this guy? This guy, I'll represent it here. This is again same as the first one. So it will be A11 to A0. And similarly, the address uh, to this guy. I have a beautiful diagram. Don't worry. Okay. So 8 is basically, 8K is basically 2 raised to 3 into 2 raised to 10. Right. So that is 13. So you need to go from A12 to A0. So this is how you lay out the circuit. So the for the 15 bits, the 15 lines coming from the microprocessor will get split. A11 to A0 will go here as well as uh, here. Let me use the pointer. So A11 to A0 will go here as well as uh, here. A13 to A0 will go here. A12 to A0 will go here. And then this chip select has to be selected according to these address locations. So that's very, very important. So that's what our next step is. So I hope this part is pretty clear. There's no confusion here. Okay, so going forward, just try to decode because we, we saw in the previous slide that uh, if, you, if you see here FFF, 
and 000 is sort of uh, common to all of them so i am just going to put that separate so a11 to a0 is separated because it is sort of uh, common to it, it has to go to each and every uh, rom or ram right if you go back to the previous hand drawn chart you will notice that a11 to a0 is subset of those 15 bits which will go to each and every memory okay so let's separate them out so this is hexadecimal representation so that's why it's 000 fff so i just mapped this that's all there's nothing magic here so 4k the starting address is 0000 so this is entirely zero so this is binary a15 14 13 12 i just expanded okay 15 is not there but we just put it because we cannot represent 3 bit right because generally it comes as a group of 4 bits all the time 3 bit is very rare so let's group it as because hexadecimal also is 4 bit so let's do it consistently so a15 is i added it it is not required in the original case but just added it because we know that only 15 bits are required so only till a14 is required but i just added a15 which is zero throughout okay and then a14 a13 a12 i am taking from here so this is 0 to 0 so that means this is 0 to 0 so you can see it here 0 0 0 to 0 0 0 so the no, no question so this is going from 1 to 4 so basically 0 0 0 1 then 0 1 0 0 then 0 1 0 1 and oh, sorry 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 0 to 4 right 0 sorry 1 to 4 so basically this is 1 that is why 0 0 0 1 Okay, let me just draw it for you so it's easy for you so this is basically represented here this is represented here and then this is basically represented here you can see that 0, 0, 0, 1 is nothing but one in hexadecimal then followed by three zeros in hexadecimal that's what here and similarly four fff is here so basically we just put the start and end so 5000 is here remember this 4 plus 1 right 5 so this is 5 in hexadecimal then followed by 0 so i hope it's clear let me just erase it okay so we just map this in the form of a table and this 11 to 0 is common to all of them so we kept it as hexadecimal this is what we need, should use for this coming up with this decoding logic okay so uh, slightly more expanded now i'm ignoring uh, this guy this is ignored because that is common so let's not play with it this one if you go in slightly more detail this is what we can do so the starting so basically 0 0 0 this these three guys so i ignored a15 also here it's only three of them okay so 0 0 0 is unique to this guy right if you see over here 0 0 0 if you see is unique to the first guy 4k rom so you can put it no problem but what about because this has 001 100 uh, 101 101 repeated so 001 010 011 is exclusively so basically these four and 100 also i think i confused a bit sorry let me do that so uh, this guy has only 0 0 0 and 0 0 0 so that's why this is marked but what about 16k it is going from 0 0 1 to 1 0 0 so you need to have all these things lined up right and this one is fortunately 1 0 1 so it is only one value which is for 1 0 1 but here we have 1 0 1 and 1 1 0 so that is what mentioned here so to point out uh, it's pretty clear so if a 14 13 12 is 0 0 0 I should select 4K ROM. But if it is anyway between 0, 0, 001 to 100, 0, 0, I should select 16K RAM. If it is 101, I should select 4K ROM. If it is 110 or 111, I should select 8K RAM. So that is your objective. As simple as that. This A11 to A0 definitely will go to all the uh, thing. But with, based on A14, A13, A12, you need to come up with a logic which is actually going to do this but then the problem for us is actually it is a 2 is to 4 decoder that means i can only take two inputs but if it was three input it would have been very easy for me but it is only two inputs so what shall we do so this is the question okay so just to summarize so this chart this is our uh, lifesaver so we will take that chart and we will 
take it to the next slide and this is the expectation for us this is what i was drawing in using my own hands in the first which was ugly but now this is what expected of you so you have a14 to a0 which is going into the input which is having which should be only having a 2 is to 4 decoder let me just put that way a 2 is to 4 decoder plus logic gate so you can only give two inputs two bits as the input but you always have this um, 15 bits here but then we realize that a11 to a0 is consistently same the only distinguishable bits are a14 a13 a12 so can we actually come up with some logic uh, maybe using a14 or a13 right because two bits is only possible so let's actually use only a14 and a13 and maybe we can use a12 inside because all these are coming but a12 let it be some uh, value which is inside and using this to the decoder you create four decode values and then using those values and a12 you should be able to select whatever address is coming should be able to select it okay so please pause here and try to see what you can do so what i am actually trying to uh, say is a14 uh, is to a12 this should go to a2 is to 4 decoder and this can produce four lines at the output and then uh, you need to have some combinations okay so let's say some combo circuit let me put c as combo some some digital circuit okay so four of them so it may uh, it's a decoder so you can actually assume that only one value will be enabled high at a time so but let's say this is going here this is going here this is going here and this is going here and then we have the a12 bit also which is sort of unique that could also go to all of these and then this should go here this control uh, chip select okay so this is the idea you come up with some circuit like this so we how did we come up it was a long journey i don't want to again repeat and repeat uh, we understood that totally 15 bits are required to represent the entire space of 32k okay but then we know that uh, there are four chips here one for two 4k roms and one 16k ram and one 8k ram arranged in a particular order and we also realized that uh, uh, this a11 to a0 is common to all of them so we can safely ignore them so we had to use a14 a13 a12 to distinguish between them but we only have a 2 is to 4 logic so i cannot use the 3 bits so i restricted to a14 and sorry this is a14 and a13 there's a small error here this is a14 to a13 it was two bits right yeah okay and then uh, this is something uh, the chip select signal should be enabled so that uh, one particular address so any address which is coming in this location so 0 0 0 0 in hexadecimal to 0 x 0 f f f if any of these address is coming this should actually go here and similarly next one was 0 x 1 0 0 0 to 0 x uh, if i remember correctly it was uh, 4 f right yeah this one any in this range should go here and similarly 0 x 5 0 0 0 to 0 x 5 f f f any of this is coming it should go here and similarly 0 x uh, 6 0 0 0 up to 0 x 7 f f f should go and sit here so this is idea so the microprocessor will only issue those address signals then the decoding logic has to figure out which uh, rom has to be selected or which ram has to be selected and also has to give that particular address so let me discard all these and one more point uh, if you are why this is uh, this one which we derived also in the previous slide because this is 4k which means 2k sorry 2 raised to uh, 2 into 2 raised to 10 which is 12 bits that is why this is coming this is 16k which requires 14 bits this is 4k again requires only 12 bits this is 8k which requires only 13 bit that's why this is coming okay so that's it so please pause the video and try to come up with your own logic any logic is fine only condition is i only have a 2 is to 4 decoder and i only have logic gates okay so i will explain my logic so this may not be the logic that you are coming up with but this is fine this is a working solution so let's actually think through so obviously uh, don't forget that a14 to 
a0 is coming from here okay so this is the entire black box so in this case you have the a14 uh, to a0 which is coming as the input out of that the two lines a14 and a13 will go to the 2 is to 4 decoder and one of these uh, outputs will be enabled based on this so for example it is 0 0 means this guy will be enabled if it is 0 1 means this guy will be enabled if it is uh, 1 0 means this guy will be enabled and if it is 1 1 means this guy will be enabled based on a14 a13 so a14 a13 is here so bas basically these two or these two or oh sorry destroy it carefully so these two and then here we have four logic possibilities and then these two and then oh again I'm making mistake I'm sorry okay so let me just go back so this is only this four bits so this is only this and then of course this so now I hope uh, you can easily explain this circuit. So A12 is, I'm using it inside, okay? So something like that. Now let's say anything in 4K. So <clears throat> anything in 4K, the first two bits will be 0, 0. So that means this is 0, 0. So this guy will be enabled. So let me just enable that. So this is 1 and this is going to here and here, okay? So 0, 0 is actually going to these two places. The reason why this also is going because there is a 0, 0 here for 16K RAM also. That is the reason, okay? So, now let's say, so, uh, we, I said it's 4K ROM address, so A12 is 0. So, that means A12 bar is 1. So, this is 1 and this is 0 because A12 is 0. I'm going, I mean, I'm taking any address, any particular address in this range. 0X, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0 up to 0X, 0, 0, F, F, F. This is the... Uh, address in this range only uh, basically bit in this range only the uh, CPU is issuing an address so in that address the most significant 4 bits is 0000, zero, zero, zero. so that means A14, A13, A12 if I take it will be 000, zero, zero because this this is only changing this is actually not changing it is all the time 0 so this will be always 0 so that is why I put uh, this guy is 0, this guy is 0, A12 is also 0. So A12 bar will be 1 and that will be 0. So this is 0, 0, so this guy will be enabled. So that means here it is a 1, here it is a 1. Now let's see, 1 and 1, it's a NAND gate, so it will be 0 here. So that means this chip is selected. Let's see if this is selected or not, because that's also important. You can't have two chip selects together, right? So this is 0 and this is 1, so this is 0. It's an NAND gate here. Okay, so this is 0. And what about these guys? This is all 0. Okay, so this is all 0. Correct? Yeah, uh, so that is the case, right? Yeah, I think uh, there is a small error here. This uh, NOT gate is required here, right? Because otherwise, uh, this decoding is default zero so that means um, this will be selected so if it this this is also one here so this will be selected so i'll change it there's a small typo okay so now it should work okay so let me just modify this and uh, come back to you or maybe before that let's explain so this is zero 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 so this is zero zero so i put all the values here and the rest you can figure out so this is zero so this will be in, uh, inverted logic so it is selected but what about this guy? So A12 was 0. So 0 and 1 is 0 here. This is 0. So it is directly coming to 0 here. This is also 0. But A12 bar was 1. So 1 and 0 is 0. That is also coming here. 0 plus 0 plus 0 is 0. But this is inverted uh, logic. Inverted Zor uh, logic. So it becomes 1. And then uh, that's it. So all, all of them are actually... Uh, Okay, Okay. so now uh, let's consider the next case which is actually any of uh, this, maybe we'll start with this case. Okay, so that case is basically it will be 0x uh, somewhere in this range, right? So it should be above uh, FFF or above 1, one. so within, within this range what I'm talking about is 0, 0, 0 to 0x. Uh, 
Yeah. Yes, it is four FFF. Correct. Yeah. So um, anything in this range, it is four. Correct, because this is three bit. Remember, it's not the fifteen, so it's four. Yeah. So uh, anything in this range, if you take, uh, then we will have first first scenario. We will have is a fourteen, a thirteen, a twelve. Let it be. Let's take the very first case itself. So it, let it be zero zero one. Okay, because it's quite possible, right? In this case. Okay. So a fourteen, a thirteen are zero again. And then uh, this will be selected, so this will be one. All others are zero. Okay, so I didn't. Uh, let me just quickly. Do yeah, sorry for the trouble. I just wanted to uh, include this not gate so that it becomes. Uh, and again, so we were talking about zero uh, x. One zero 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 to zero x four uh, FFF range. So this was the range I was uh, talking about, and let we were considering a fourteen, a thirteen, a twelve as zero zero one, which is actually this particular case, start case. Okay, so we have this one is zero, this one is zero. A twelve is one, so this will be one. This is zero. This is zero. This is zero. So that this will be inverted and this will not be selected. So no problem there. And then uh, A twelve bar. A twelve bar is uh, because A twelve is one. A twelve bar is zero. A twelve is one. A twelve bar is uh, zero. So let me just put numbers here so that it's easy. So A twelve is one. That's it. Okay. Let me just try. So zero and one is zero, but then this is inverted, so this becomes this. One and one is one, so there is one here. Then zero and uh, so this this will be this will be one here. This will be zero here. What about this? Zero and zero, so zero and zero is zero here, so this will be zero. So what about uh, this? One zero zero is one, and then inverted of that will be zero. So this will be zero. What about this? One and zero is zero. Inverter of that is one, and then of course this is also one. So that is fine, right? There is no problem here. Okay. So any of these range will work. Now let's take another example. So we will take a zero one zero case. So a fourteen, a thirteen, a twelve is zero one zero. So that means this is zero. This is one. Uh, so basically, zero one. Uh, again, we'll choose this guy, right? This is one. This is zero. This is zero. This is zero. So a twelve bar. Uh, this is a twelve actually is zero. So this is one. A twelve is zero. A twelve bar is one. Uh, here it is zero. That's it. So again, this will not be selected. So this is one. What about this zero and uh, this is coming to be zero, correct? This is coming to be zero. Here it's also zero. So zero and zero. Oh, yeah. This is one zero and zero is zero. That is one. So um, yeah, this is zero. So zero and zero. This is zero. Uh, one and uh, this is zero. This is zeros opposite. This is one. I hope I'm not making any mistake. If you're finding, please get back to me. So this is perfect, and this is one coming here, and then this is one and zero, which is zero. So zero plus one plus zero is one, but again the inverted logic will make it zero. So that is chosen. So there's no problem there. I think the rest of the thing you can easily figure out uh, uh, for all the other things. So I need not actually explain to you, and uh, probably we can take maybe one more example, like one zero one. Okay, so that is one zero one means a fourteen is one. This is zero. A twelve is one, right? So a twelve bar is zero. This is so a one zero means you are going to select this. So this all others are zero. So here it becomes zero. Then this one a twelve is one, so this is zero. Uh, here it is coming to be zero. 
So let, let's put those numbers in 0 into 0. So this is uh, 1. 1 and 0. So this will be 0 here. So this will come to 0. A12 bar is 0. So 0 and 1 is 0 here. So 3 zeros here. So the inverted of that is 1. So it won't be selected. And then of course this guy is uh, A12 is 1 and uh, this guy is also 1. So 1 and 1 is uh, 1 but our inverted logic. So this is 0. So this guy will be selected. And again this is 1 here. So this, this will not be selected. This will not be selected. This will not be selected. And of course, I'd always remember I think I forgot to tell you. Address is anyway coming. Okay. So you don't have to worry about address. Which cell chip is selected based on that address space is what important. Okay, so I hope everything is clear. There's no confusion here. In case I'm making any mistake, please feel free to let me know because this is all handcrafted and there may be chance that I may miss out on one of these. Okay, so that's it uh, for this particular session. I hope you're able to understand this memory design task. It's not easy. It takes some time for you to grasp, but understand this thoroughly again, the way we are approaching this problem. But the key, two key takeaways, other than the uh, understanding of the digital circuit to come up with this, the another important thing is like, I may have a distributed memory. I may have a 4K ROM, 16K RAM, 4K ROM, and another 8K RAM, which are distributed in space physically. But when the microprocessor sees them, it sees it as actually a sequential arrangement of memory, one after the other, going from, in this particular case, going from 0, 0, 0, 0, all the way up to, 0x, what was the last value we were having? It was 7, f, f, f. Those many. So you had around 32k locations. So that was the beauty about it. Okay, so uh, that's it for uh, this particular session. We will uh, see you in the next lecture. And uh, till then time, uh, till that time, it's goodbye from my side. Thank you.